Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be doing a processor upgrade to my Mac Pro. If you're watching this video because you're going to do the same upgrade, I do not claim to be an expert on this, just please be careful inside of your Mac Pro. Obviously, the first thing I have to do is take the door off the Mac Pro. I'm going to take out everything that's easily removable out of my Mac Pro. I'm going to start by taking out all four of my hard drives. The number 4 slot is empty. The number 3 slot has a 320 gigabyte hard drive in it. The number 2 slot has a 160 gigabyte hard drive in it. And the number 1 slot has my 90 gigabyte SSD in it. Now for the RAM. I have to take out both of the riser cards of my Mac Pro. You can label them top and bottom if you want, but I'm not sure that it really matters which one goes where. So here are my riser cards out of my Mac Pro. You can see I have four sticks of RAM in total. They're each one gigabyte sticks, totaling up to four gigabytes of RAM in my Mac Pro. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take the video card out of my Mac Pro. This is the ATI Radeon X1900 XT with 512 megabytes of VRAM. If you're doing this upgrade and you have any other cards installed in here, you're going to want to go ahead and take them out. This graphics card always seems unusually hard to get out of here. I always have to angle it like this to slide it out. The next thing I gotta do is take out the single screw that holds in this big fan assembly. Sorry if my hand is blocking the camera a little bit, but it's very hard to get back to that screw. You can then take out all of the screws that hold the RAM cage in place. There should be two on the bottom and two in the back. Now I can separate the RAM cage from the housing over the heat sinks. If you're doing this upgrade, please be careful with this because you don't want to break the plastic. Just give it time and be patient. Once you've got that out, you can remove the fan assembly. If any dust has built up on your fans, this is the time to clean it off. And as you can see, this is the power plug that plugs the fan assembly in. Now before taking the heat sinks out, I have to take one wire off the motherboard for each heat sink. This wire transfers data about the temperature of the processor to the motherboard. Now this one's a little bit harder to get to, it's right down in here. You may not be able to see it in the video, but believe me, it's there. To get the heat sinks out, you're going to need a 3mm hex head tool. The one that I have is 9 inches long, and I believe that you have to have one that is at least 6 inches. You need to take the screws off in a certain order, so you can take the pressure off of the processors evenly. Just do them diagonally, so if you do the bottom left corner first, do the top right corner next. It can be a little hard to get these heat sinks out because of the thermal paste, but just wiggle it around a little bit and they should come on out. Pulling out the bottom heat sink, I have to be a little bit careful of that wire that I disconnected earlier. While I've got my heat sinks out, I'm going to go ahead and clean them up a little bit. If you're doing this yourself, you can try to get a little bit of the dust off with your fingers, but it's easiest just to use a small paintbrush. Now for taking the processors out. I have to detach a small clip on each of the pieces that keeps the processors in. If you're doing this yourself, I'd recommend using something plastic so that you don't scratch up the motherboard with something metal. I should be able to just grab the processor and pull it out. 
you have to be careful with this if you're doing it because the pins are not on the processor, the pins are on the motherboard. If you bend one of these pins, you're pretty much screwed. Here you can see all of the contact points on the processor. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the new processors in. These are each quad core processors. I should just be able to flip down this latch and lock this processor down just like the other ones were locked in. So now I'm going to go ahead and put thermal paste on my processors. Some people say that you have to put thermal paste all over the processors, but all that you really need to do is put one line across where the cores are. The paste will spread out a bit when you tighten down your heatsink. I'm using Arctic Silver thermal paste, and sometimes it's hard to get it to come out of the tube in a straight line, but you can just smear it a little bit with the tip of the tube. So off camera I just put my line of paste on my other processor and I'm going to go ahead and put the heat sink on. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the screws back in just like I took them out doing it diagonally. If you're doing this what you're going to want to do is tighten the screws up just so that they're snug and then go back and tighten them down once you have all four in. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my other heatsink in. And as you put the heatsinks in, the thermal paste will spread out. If you're doing this, put the screws in this one just like I told you for the last one. So now I'm going to go ahead and connect my heatsink wires to the motherboard. And I just skipped and did this one off camera, but now you can see it without my fingers in the way. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my big fan assembly back in. Now I'm going to go ahead and put back in my heatsink cover and try to get it to lock in with the RAM cage. If you're doing this yourself, just like I said before, just be patient with it, they will click in. Now that I've gotten this all aligned, I'm going to go ahead and put the screws back in my RAM cage to hold everything together. Now I'm going to put in the screw to hold my fan assembly in. Now that everything is back together, I'm going to put my video card, my RAM, and my hard drives in, and everything should be good to go. So now it's time to boot this thing up. It looks like it's booting up fine, just on a different display than normal. Now that it's booted, I'm going to go ahead into System Report and see what it says. As you can see here, System Profiler says that I have two processors with a total of eight cores. So the upgrade was a huge success. So that's it for this video. I hope that you guys liked it and some of you found it helpful. And as always, thanks for watching.